Now it's nine. First item, I think that's an assist. Councilor McGregor, you have met the five year criteria of the Liberia Council, and here is your award pin. Congratulations. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Okay. Adoption of the agenda. We resolved that the agenda for the July 21st, 2023 meeting be accepted as presented with the addition of drainage improvements on commercial and mill streets and improved order forms for waste transfer station water treatment plants under general business and dust control, dust control under the in camera session of council. So please move it. Councilor Jones, Secretary, Councilor McDonald. All in favor? Be it resolved that the minutes of the June 16, 2023 regular meeting council be hereby approved as circulated. Councillor Fisher moves it. Seconder. Mr. Hatch. Discussion. Any errors or omissions? All in favor? Okay, under finance, the general account. Be it resolved that the July 11, 2023 general account payable being checks number 6575 to 6580 and 6582 to 6639 and the amount of $121,513.28 be hereby approved. Please move that. Fisher. Discussion? All in favor? <coughs> We resolved that general accounts payable checks number 6581 to Big Valley Wash in the amount of $200 be approved. Please move that. Councilor McGregor, second Councilor Jones. Discussion? All in favor? And we ask Councilor Christian it resolved at direct deposit 270 being a payroll correction for the period May 29th to June 9, 2023, and the amount of $884.36 be hereby approved. We move that. Mr. Hatch, second here. Councilor McDonald, discussion. All in favor? It resolved at the direct deposit 271 being staff payroll for the period June 12th, June 23rd, 2023, and the amount of $15,959. And 61 cents to be hereby approved. Please move that. Councillor Fisher, seconder. Councillor Jones, discussion. All in favor? Great. It resolved a direct deposit 272 being a payroll correction from the city of June 12th to June 23rd, 2023, in the amount of $771.79 to be hereby approved. Councillor McGregor passed. Please move it. Seconder. Councillor McConnell, discussion. Who is this for, uh, Kevin? Uh, Seven, 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 being a staff payroll for the period of June 26, 2023 to June, July 7, 2023, and the amount of $17,274.49 be hereby approved. Councilor McDonald moved it. Taking there by Councilor McTrigger. Discussion? All in favor? Be the result resolved and direct upon the 274 being council indemnity for the month of June 2023 and the amount of $5,617.58 be hereby approved. Councilor McGurn moves it. Councilor McDonald seconded. All the discussion? All in favor? <clears throat> utility account be resolved at July 11, 2023 utility accounts payable being checks number 1023 to 1048. In the amount of fifteen thousand two hundred and eighteen dollars and forty-five cents, be hereby approved. Please move that. Councillor Hatch, seconder Councillor Jones. Discussion. All in favor. Sure. Be resolved that the statement of revenues and expenditures report to June thirtieth, twenty twenty-three, be received as presented. Please move that. Councillor Jones, seconder. 
Mr. Jones. All in favor? The results of the bank reconciliation for the month of June 2023 be approved as previously circulated. Please move down. Mr. Fisher, seconder. Mr. Hatch, discussion? All in favor? Okay, delegations. And we should probably do communications first in order to do the public hearing at 915. Oh. Okay, under the order of communications, we have the Age Friendly Manitoba July newsletter. There are several from the Association of Manitoba Municipalities. They are dated June the 9th, the 12th, the 15th, the 16th. June 21st, 26th, June 30th, July 10th, and July 12th. There was information from Canadian Pacific Kansas City Rail on their rail activity notification. Enbridge Pipeline has provided us with their pipeline safety and emergency information. The Federation of Canadian Municipalities has provided some communiques. They are dated June the 12th. June the 19th, June the 26th, and July the 4th. They have some information on their business entitled Halt Incorporated, which includes information on bike infrastructure. Legacy partnerships have provided information on wellness and work-life balance. The Manitoba Association of Watersheds have provided their summer speaker series information, as well as their newsletter. Manitoba Environmental Industries Association has provided information on the Clean Tech Conference. Multi Manitoba or Multi Material Stewardship Manitoba provided their 2022 annual report, and the report is actually available in our office if anybody wants to see it. Our municipal Relations have provided a bulletin with respect to asset retirement obligations. And if you've taken a look at that, there are a few more things that we will have to look at internally to meet requirements. Um, municipal Relations also provided a bulletin for waiving fees for private well and cistern testing. Sustainable Building Manitoba provided information on building codes and energy efficiency. There were thank you letters received from STARS as well as from the Wawanisa School. And there is a letter from Pat Warburton related to development processes. Okay. We have resolved that the above noted communications be received. We have that. Mr. Brown, seconder. Mr. Jones, discussion. All in favor? Yes, I think we could. Okay, we'll do the committee reports. Uh, Start with zone, uh, yeah, south zone, board three. Councillor Fish, you have written report. You can add to it. Uh, basically, I took it upon myself to drive every road that is in my ward, and then I drove additional roads in other municipalities. We're not in that bad shape, so there definitely is a couple of trouble spots, but. Oh my God, some of them in other municipalities are by far the worst. So we have this problem of people trying to buy fast scales and they're pounding some of our roads to scrap. So, and I don't know how we can stop it unless we put Craig out there with a big stick. So, <laughs> so um, <laughs> yeah, and sure. Yeah, anything further? No. Councillor Dills, you had no. Okay. Board two, Councillor Hatch, you have a written report. Anything to add to it? I have filed a report. I want to add that I think we need to revisit the shingles at the transfer station, uh, what we're accepting and when we're accepting it, and who's bringing them. So we. Uh, that's that up for the transportation committee meeting. You could do transportation committee, or are you wanting something on the next council meeting? Next council meeting, sorry. Anything further? That's it. 
for what comes with those. You're reporting anything to add? Uh, Mr. Chairman, just like that, uh, like Mr. Fisher, I've been on quite a few roads in Hermes Valley and in additional ones around us. And ours are, I, I think with our new blades we bought, uh, they're really working, taking washboard out and, and working well. And uh, some of the enemies probably has got some dirty frost oils yet that aren't tightening up where I see ours are starting to. So I think it's, uh, our guys are doing a great job. So I just wanted to share that. Councilor McGregor, you have a written report in that? Nothing to add. Okay. Our report is there, nothing to add. Do you have a report? Anything to add to yours? No, nothing to add. Anything else, officer? Anything to add to yours? No. Public works report? Anything to add to that? Okay. Have the fire chief report? That's it for reports. It be resolved that the verbal and written reports be received. Correctly move that. Officer Jones, seconder. Officer Fisher, discussion. All in favor? Slowly. <laughs> okay, be it resolved that the regular meeting of council be recessed to allow council to hold public hearings to receive representations from any person who wish to make them in respect to the conditional use application. Please move that. Councilor Fisher, second. Councilor Jones, rather. Councilor second. Councilor McDonald. All in favor? Right. Okay. I'll speak slowly so I'm going to use up a minute or two. Under the order of public hearings, we have a conditional use application that is to allow for the storage of recreational vehicles. This is in an ag limited zone. Uh, the applicant is in attendance if council should have any questions for him. I will let you know that there have been no calls to the office and no written communications received on it. Uh, is there anyone in the audience who would like to come forward and speak on this public hearing? I just might have a comment, but you're welcome uh, to come wait. forward to the delegation table. Oh, okay. Please give us your name and it's uh, Patricia Warburton. I guess the only questions I have as because of the AL status, usually that's not commercial, but I know conditional uses can be applied for that, and I understand that. I don't live in that area, so it doesn't apply to me, but the concerns that I do have that can present is that right now, we know that other storage zones, this does say for trailers, but yet in the application, it does indicate growth of other containments or otherwise. With that being said, we know that people work from home now, they need to expand their businesses and will work out of these containers as well. Uh, with that also comes other issues, um, hobbyists, businesses, vehicle buffs, that kind of thing can be appreciated, but if the community is willing to tolerate, that's fine. Um, is it eco-friendly? Will there be bins for recycle um, present at that lot for people to put their wares into that they no longer wish to use? That could be the benefit of the municipality or the benefit of the owner uh, for recycled purposes. So I understand it's just not RVs, which is how it's stated in the papers here. But I think that the note should reflect that for expansion for this individual. And that's all I had for comments. Okay, thank you. Just some food for thought. Thank you. Would the applicant like to come forward and address any of those comments? Sure, I didn't write all the questions down, but um, 
<laughs> My name is David Peters. Um, so remind me if I forget anything here, but uh, it is supposed to start out with, uh, I will be fencing the property regardless of what happens with uh, the conditional use. And we will be starting off with campers, boats, um, any type of trailers like that. Um, there is one sea can on property currently right now, and that's kind of for my own um, storage. Um, it is going to have cameras and um, security system on it. I had not thought of uh, the, the garbage disposal, but if it is something that we like, um, it is a cost to, to myself to have it in there, and I don't really want uh, individuals just kind of dumping their stuff off at a location like that when they could take it to the, the dump that is local. But, um, it, uh, yeah, I thought it would be something that people from Nynet could come and drop off some uh, vehicles and trailers in the area and they would also be coming into the co-op and trying to get fuel or some of the other businesses in town here. So, um, does that answer? Yeah. Thank you. Anything else? Nope. Yeah, unless council has any questions of anyone. Burns all representatives in regards to the conditional use application number C2 slash 2023 to allow storage of recreational vehicles on the KL Agricultural Limited Zone located on, on Lot 1, Plan 2528, VLTO, located on part of Northeast Quarter 23717 WPM Peters, have been dealt with. Therefore, be resolved that the public hearing be concluded and council resume this normal order of business. So, doing that, Mr. seconder. Fisher, all in favor? Okay, do we have delegations? Go? Delegations. The first of the delegations is going to be Don Zach Noach. Zach Noach. Morning. Uh, Good morning. Don Zach Noach is my name. I know most of you here. So um, I'm here to discuss the water issues uh, created by the water overflow um, crossing Commercial Street um, and flooding my property, uh, commonly known as 210 Commercial Street. Um, now I appeared before council uh, last June and I'd quickly like to uh, just read a few lines from that presentation I had that day for new council members who uh, weren't aware of that time. So anyway, um, again, uh, this was my appearance on uh, June the 2nd. When there is a rain event, often water will run across the street, eroding my driveway and flooding the lot. On occasion of a heavy rain event, it will push water onto the concrete floor of my shed as well. I've had repair driveway damage a number of times that I repaired at my own cost. And um, last year, uh, the works department uh, did repair the uh, driveway twice with crushed asphalt uh, located uh, at the dump site. Now, um, Again, I brought this issue to the attention of some council members in the works department two years ago, so three years ago from now, and uh, told the issue would be addressed. Um, I was told the matter had been discussed by council. Unfortunately, to date, nothing had happened. Okay, so after appearing at council meeting a year ago, um, the culverts across the street from me, um, running east and west. Uh, many of the ends were bent, so they were uh, they were straightened. And a culvert was opened up um, that flowed to the north, uh, kind of behind Perry Klein shed. Now, that did alleviate the issue uh, mainly 
when there was a small rain event. So meaning, you know, if it was a half inch or something, that those colors would handle that water. Uh, however, when any time there's a harder rain, that water continues to cross the road from the south side. This year in the month of June, there have been two rains that crossed the road and flooded my lot and lots to the north of me. It has put water onto my concrete floor in my shed and eroded my driveway again. And I can no longer store anything valuable on the floor of my shed, meaning lumber, because the floor is wet and you never know when it's going to happen. And uh, as I say, my driveway is eroded again. Um, now, it, it was kind of interesting because it was noted last year before those small repairs were done that there is a dip on the pavement right across, right at my laneway. And that well, I was told by the contractor who installed the sewer to the property across the street from me that the, it is probably settled. And so that's where the water likes to cross. Now, there was uh, pavement done in Wawanisa in the last month, and they dropped all the equipment off right across from my building, but they never put any pavement there, and that would have helped a little bit. The ditch on the south side of commercial street is just cannot handle that excess flow and that water is coming from right up here on fourth street also on the third all that water is flowing north and anytime you get a, a either a harder rain or a larger amount that system can just not handle it there's a lot of water going down there and it, it just doesn't have the capacity to to get it away and uh, this spring or a month ago so when we had those uh, two harder rain events uh, I spoke to three people living on that street who witnessed it and they said the water crossed the entire block <laughs> so not not just at my place but the entire block and it, it was it was just a torrent and the, the one, I spoke to the one witness who said he got up at three o'clock in the morning when that event happened. And he said it was a river running through between the new fourplex beside me and my shed. And it's eroded it down there, went down the hill. And I'm sure uh, Derek's gonna address that. Now, I wanna explain that that lot that I own has been in my family for approximately 40 years. My father purchased the property, built a steel building on there. And in the past, there was never, um, there was never issue with water there. Um, now, I've been born and raised and spent my whole life here. And so I experienced, um, you know, and seen what happened with water. I mean, I delivered grain to the elevator to, to that was located across the street on the south side. Um, of course, over time, a lot of things have changed, but I think the water issue kind of changed. Um, the, the railway track ran through Wawanisa, and that was approximately where the hall is located today. So when the hall was constructed in 1989, um, and I was on that uh, building committee at that time, uh, we were obligated to fill the uh, ditches that were along each side of the railway. Now the railway had deep ditches and they were taking that water. So that water that was heading north, which is the natural flow in town, um, went into their ditch system, which were deep and, and got away. So after that time, the town then started to direct water differently. So it's coming off of Main Street, it's then run east and then north. And as I say, when all that, 
you can imagine these two streets and all that water heading there at the same time. It's a tremendous flow and it, it just can't handle it. And um, so my father had many issues, but as I say, the last, I've owned the property for almost 20 now. And the last, every year it just is getting worse. Now, again, there was uh, across the street, it was just all open lots. There was no four flats, there was no uh, housing there. So the more buildings you put, of course, you're gonna have more roofs, you're gonna have more water flowing. So the ditch is fairly adequate on the south side to control the flow coming off of those uh, dwellings and buildings that are there as it is. And then, then we have this extra flow and it's uh, quite a steep ditch coming down uh, you know, it comes off the, uh, I don't know, the highway there and behind the church and between the hall and, you know, it's steep. So when that water gets flowing, it's flowing quickly. So um, I, I've seen that problem uh, get worse through the years. Uh, again, I've addressed council a number of times. Um, it, 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 any repairs that have been done um, as I say, they, they help, but they don't, they don't adequately address the situation. Now, um, I'm, I'm not a water engineer. Um, I'm just an old guy who's seen what's happened through the years. And I think the time has come that we address this issue. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, uh, you can't put it off. There's there's now a new um, a new fourplex beside me, and the water's coming at it. Now the interesting thing there was that prior to the construction, that was mostly an open lot. Um, many of you will know it as Herman Heinrichs's lot, and so that lot had a a little bit of a natural flow to the east, and that so when the water crossed the road, a lot of it would go on to that lot and, and move to the east to the ditch and then run north. Um, now with the fourplex there, uh, that can't happen um, because the fourplex is quite high so that any water crossing the road, <coughs> it can only move east or west. And I'm very concerned that it's gonna put even extra water. And as a matter of fact, the last event, um, I had uh, someone who witnessed it and they said it was just like a river running between my shed and the fourplex. And it uh, certainly resulted in damage down the hill to the north. So we, we can't allow this situation to occur. It's easy to put off and, you know, say it's an odd event, but it's not an event, an odd event when it's happening repeatedly every year and a number of times each year. So I would urge council to take action. I think I've been extremely patient as a property owner. Um, that, that water running up across my lot is devaluing the property. Um, I really, uh, you know, I, I don't have the answers to this, um, but there's got to be some answers. It's, it's got to, uh, whether, you know, it's deepening the ditch, um, maybe directing the water in several different flows. At one time, more of it ran down 4th Street toward the swimming pool. Now, I, I know, you know, that can create some issues a little further down, like where we used to have the old rink. It was always wet there in the spring. Not many of you will remember that, but um, there is a house there now, but there's also enough right away that a berm or ditch, I feel, could could be put in there. So maybe some of this water should be split off in a few directions and maybe that would help somewhat. Uh, as I say, don't have the answers. There is people who, um, who know water and how to control it. And so maybe that's a direction council could be looking. But again, I would I would urge them to, uh, to address this situation. It's, it's gone on for a long time and uh, I, I think it's, it's uh, high time we, we did something. So. Thank you for your time, and uh, hopefully you'll uh, take this seriously. Thank you, Mr. Lickley. Before you leave, oh, else for anything, but yeah, any questions? Mr. Zach Nolish? There's 
potential plan on our desk here. Is Mr. Zakanovich seeing that? I don't know. No, I haven't. Have we discussed with uh, in general business? Okay. Yeah, I mean, we can certainly provide a copy. So we had a little bit of direction from council as to uh, which way they want to go, but it's not that it hasn't been looked at. So. Okay. Yes, it's just applicable to probably both delegations here. Yeah. So, yeah. So I just wonder if we want to, in the delegations, have discussion with the um, delegates about the plan, or are we going to allow that during the? the well, as we, what we thought, we'd hear the, dele the delegations, and at that point, when it comes to discussion on general business, we can do it with the uh, public works to see how that, that that's heard by them, or the public works plan rather. Um, not necessarily that's what council wants to do, but it's just some of the, the topic of discussion. Okay, I think I I would just like the delegates to have the ability to speak to the plan once we get into discussion. Well, yeah, once the discussion is going, we can do that. Okay, okay. If, if there's one more thing I'd, I'd just like to add in that, in that, uh, that ditch where the water is heading north uh, and hits Commercial Street, a highly unusual situation where there's a culvert in there with a right hand angle. Um, water doesn't like to make right hand turns, no more than we do. Um, that culvert that takes the flow to the east uh, has risen on the east end of that culvert. In, in, uh, I remember when that culvert was buried and it was mostly, there was only say three or four feet exposed on the end. Today it's probably 15. So I think the frost pushed it up in the air, which isn't helping the situation, you know, because it it should have been down lower. But that um, that's a, a bit of an issue as well. So okay, with that, I'll. Thank you. Uh, so should we stick around then? Of or? course, I would suggest. Okay, sure. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, we have resolved that the presentation by. Those act now related to flooding issues across the commercial street would like to promptly be received. Thanks to you. Who else? Second is Councilor Fisher. All in favor? Derek Shear, shed at 203 Park Street, just just down from the Hans property and, and directly north of the condos. So mine will be a lot shorter because I'll just save ditto to some of Don's stuff. He covered an awful lot of it with a lot more history than I could provide. So I would add that in the past, it hasn't really affected me that much, the water coming across the street for the past 12 years that I've owned the shed. Because when it came across the street, as Don said, it had a chance to work its way east. Now with the condo being there, prior to the decks being built and the driveways being paved, it came across the street and funneled between the two condos in that two inch range of it. And I ended up with two and a quarter inches of water in my shed. I've had Cancade come and, and give me a quote. The water worked its way up the insulation on the heated side of the shed. They suggested um, dehumidifiers and pulled the insulation out. The bill would be $3,900. The side of the hill, and this isn't a, in my opinion, and again, I'm not a water engineer. I can tell you that water and manure run downhill generally. <laughs> right now, I'm trying to push the manure back up the hill to you guys. So <clears throat> the the side of the hill, the sump pumps from the the new fourplex since since it was built have been pumping out on the side of my hill. I talked to the committee members and said that it's okay that they're pumping on the side of the hill, but I want them down over the edge of the hill into the drainage ditch along my shed. Five requests over six weeks to have those sometimes extended were never met. And on June, sometime during the week of June 12th, the sump lines were extended right to the edge of the condo property and dumped off directly on the mine. That's when I lost my uh, cool 
and a heated discussion with board members and chair of the building committee. On June 15th, the sump lines were diverted into a uh, tile line and the weeping tile was pushed to the east ditch, which helped. I have some facts and figures on how long the sump pumps ran, and it is kind of shocking what a one, one third horse pump at 42 gallons a minute. When it runs at peak times, ran for 20 seconds a minute, at low times, ran for 10 seconds a minute. So if we use that 10 seconds a minute, they, they put out seven gallons, which is kind of surprising. Three pumps at seven gallons is 21 gallons a minute. Times 60 minutes is 1,260 gallons an hour. Times 24 hours is 30,000 gallons. Times seven days a week, you're at, you're at over 200,000 gallons per week being pumped on the side of my lot. The other problem is the downspouts were never drafted to the east ditch. In fact, the downspouts were never put down. They were in the upright position since the, the condo has been built. For every inch of rain that falls, you get six gallons per square foot off a roof line. That's another 36,000 gallons pumped onto my, the side of my hill. No attempt at all to divert that. And the only answer I got was it's under construction. Both myself and then the independent adjuster made the same comment. I'm not, I'm under, I'm not sure why the, there wasn't lines put on the bottom of the, the um, downspouts and directed the east ditch. That's what happens in every other landscaping construction job. But the answer I got is it was built on a hill. Which way do you think the water is going to go? Downhill. Downhill. Yeah, this caused the problem, the sump lines and the and the and the water from the downspouts. It definitely caused the problem on the side of the hill because that water just seeps out slowly down. And now the side of my hill is 10 inches lower than it was prior to the condos going in. Did it did it add to the problem of the water on the floor? It didn't help, that's for sure. The big part there is when it comes across the street, and it happened twice this year, once with the two inch rain event, once with the inch and a quarter, and numerous times in the past, but in the past it has the ability to work its way east. Now it can't go east, it hits the driveways and has to go east or west. And if it goes west, it goes on to Don's and then on to mine. The suggestion was made, why don't I dig a ditch on the west side of my shed, which could be done. But if I dig a ditch on the west side of my shed, there is no ditch on the north side of my yard. So it's just going to push, push the problem on somebody else. Right now, it's it's my problem in the shed. It's not a residence, it's not somebody's house. It was close to going on to the house on the west side when it did work its way down the shed. My question to council is, who do we go to in a situation like this where a neighbor is pushing water onto, whether it's a new build or a, like there's rules in place in the ag, ag community, you can't put water on your neighbor without permission. I mean, there's people, there's death threats over that all the time. It's the same thing in town. You can't put water into your neighbor, even under new construction. Lands, first rule of landscaping, we did some is, and you can drive around and see there's retaining walls put in, the water has, has to attempt to be put to the ditches. That wasn't done in this case, and I'm I'm the one that has the bills because of it. There was a warning made on June 15th that we need to fix this because the next rain event, and it it came through the between the two condos. There's a pile of dirt you can drive by. I have lots of pictures. It pushed stones and dirt through the middle off the property. There's a water line on the side of my shed that's eight inches deep. That never happened prior to this. Yes, we need to fix the drainage on the south side so that it doesn't come across the road. More importantly to me, just me personally, when it does come across the road, it used to run east and it never came into my shed. When Don made the comment that they opened up the ditch on the east side behind Perry's shop, which is now the town shop, that ditch needs to be deepened too because it just comes onto the road, runs to the west and ends up in the east ditch or the west ditch east of the condos and my property and just adds the water that has to go through there. So if we're going to divert water, we have to make sure it stays where we put it. So basically you're suggesting we work our way uphill and right to Commercial Street. Well, and 
I don't know if it's being recorded on camera. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if where the water's going right now, where it ends up. Does everybody know where it ends up? Like where it's designed to go? Oh, the river. Or where it, right before the river, where does it go? Highway yard. Yeah. Does anybody see a problem with that? A huge problem there. Environmental problem. Huge environmental problem there. It's all chemicals. There's one gate, culvert with a gate in the highway yard at the Costa River. Is it always closed? I don't know. It's <laughs> but it, there's so much traffic in there from my previous experience that you make a ditch and because of all the traffic in and out and then you get the rain events, it's hard to keep the ditch so it is running that way. But by design, it's going into the highway yard. The, the culvert at the top, uh, I believe, but where our shop is now, that, that culvert coming out of that side is directed on that side of the road, on the east side of the road, going we'll right to the river and that side only. Not yeah, but it, do, it doesn't. It, it, it comes it, onto the road. It needs to be deepened. It needs grass cleaned out. So the stuff that's designed, and I'm not saying it out loud, but you guys can figure it out. The stuff, all this water that's designed to go into the highway yard is a huge problem. Because it's picking up that lot is water all winter long, and there's only and I'm not talking just in one spot. The entire lot has no snow on it for one reason, and that's where we're putting all the water. And it also has asphalt and oil and contaminants and like it. If the farmer was doing that, or Sugar was doing that, or anyone else was doing that, there would be a big problem associated with this. Just for clarification. Prior to the fourplex, no water issues. Ever. No. The you mentioned one time that it backed up. As, it, as soon as that east ditch was opened up that Don was talking about, and it wasn't deepened, it came across the road and then into the side. So the only time it's happened is when that culvert was opened up on the east side and had a little wee bit in the one corner because it backed up. This time, the, well, the entire shed floor is. East half of the shed has two and a quarter inches of water on it. It's not cemented. West half of the shed is cemented within floor heat. There's a water line I can provide pictures, but eight inches up. So Derek, I noticed you have you got enough drainage from your shed to the little ditch there. Yeah. So basically the water was that full in that ditch. It was eight inches up the side of the shed. So that, that's that's never happened. Must be over the road. Is that why the road was out here for approach? Yeah, I think it, was a it, it ran across my lot from the corner of the shed across, which, well, that's never happened because there's never been eight inch of water in there. And it ran, it ran across the road. That culvert isn't big enough at the end, not to handle everything that's coming now. One of the problems, Derek, is the saturation that you're getting from the sump pumps and everything, that ground cannot take no. additional moisture at all. That's why the sump lines needed to be ran over right. and into the drainage. To this day, I, I don't know why they weren't. And, and on the week of June 12th, the sump lines were ran, ran right to the edge of the property. Yeah. You might as well kick me in the nuts at that point. Because all that was doing was making sure it wasn't on the condos and 100% on that one. Do you have a you know where they're running now? They're running into, drop? They're running into that beam straws. Yeah. As of Monday, after the last request, and they're, they ran into these solid pipes that I've been asking for since May 1st. So they're not running into your property anymore? As of Monday, they're not, no. Deep drops to the sump lines? No. But I mean, that's just a temporary fix. That, that, that is my question. Who does the, the property owner go to? Because I had to make repeated requests, repeated requests, and make enemies out of volunteers and make but I, I still have no redirection, yeah. nothing, because it's deemed overland flooding. The only reason there's overland flooding is because, yes, the ditch on the south side can't handle it for 12, 13 years. Like this wasn't a torrential rain event of two inches and an inch in quarter. We've had those before. Now all of a sudden I have rain water on the floor. And to Don's comment, I have five vehicles in there right now. It, smell of, I have a musty smell because I don't have any, I have fans running like from the ring, but my concern is no longer that it's coming between the two condos, but it's like Don said, it's 
there's no drainage in those driveways. Nothing. They're higher than the grade that was there before. The water can't run east. It's forced east or west. So the stuff that's forced west is still coming down onto my lot. And if I just dig a ditch, like was suggested on the west side, it won't be my problem anymore. I could do that. Apparently, I have liability insurance that actually covers me for that. So, do I just dig a ditch and make it somebody else's problem? Anything else, Councillor? Any questions? And I, I looked at that, and I know exactly where, you know, the idea is where the water's going to run. But uh, it, to me, it should go east and down around the dike. But that's yeah, that's my opinion when I look at that. Yeah. Do we have an answer for Mr. Shear's question about who you should go to? Because I, I don't. So part of this isn't within our jurisdiction. The drainage is, but right. sump lines and stuff like that. That's not really our that church is jurisdiction, civil matter. right? So it becomes a civil matter. And then part of it is certainly within the manageable building code where there are regulations as to when you're building what you can do with your water. So conversation with the contractor to make sure that as they are completed, that they're complying with that in a certain way. The answer I got back from the contractor was they are not responsible for the, the quote that they didn't. Who was the contractor? Um, Mickey Friesen. But he didn't tender on the landscaping part of it or anything. So, so he was essentially about that. they hit like the groundwater digging into the foundations. There's, I think there's springs under that along. We, which isn't there springs under the whole village here, basically? Yeah. No. <laughs> but but on June fifteenth, when those sump lines and the my understanding is all the weeping tiles instead of being run into the sump pits, they were ran into this line, and then the additional sump lines were also ran into this line. My concern is. That line that is running is about two and a half feet deep. That's not going to work in the wintertime. So then are the sump lines going to be, and the landscaping still hasn't happened. And I, I've asked, I know that the company that came and gave me a quote for fixing the side of my hill was one of the companies, but is there a plan for the, like, who do I get answers from? Because that's a matter rather than a council matter. It's on between the two landowners. There, is there room between you and the condos to set up a berm or whatever to divert the water to the east? Like, is there a back lane or whatever that should be there that could have a ditch put in and drain to the east? I don't think there's a back lane. There's not one. Of well, it's not a back lane, but is there not a designated area that should be municipal properties so between slave blocks? No, so there's lots of money. But again, my question is, who do I go to? Is it the landowner? I can help you the best that I can. There's some provincial regulations that we have to follow as well, but I can always get the information that you need. On a municipal basis, you're not referring to landowner, landowner. Right, involving the ditches and the water flow. And with respect to um, the requirements for the proper landscaping, etc. It would be coming to me as development officer because that's part of, like I say, the requirements under the building code to make sure that those are met. Well, my questions to you, so you told me you were going to get back to me after talking to the building committee. Uh, I spoke to the building committee and they were doing some landscaping. They had believed that it would be completed before this council meeting. It is not. I think from looking when Chelsea and I went out, I think there is more that needs to be done than just the landscaping part. So that is part of the plan that Chelsea has drafted up and provided today to council. So if you can. And as you can understand, on. it's it's very frustrating when I ask these questions and then somebody will get back to me and somebody will get back to me and then no one gets back to me. And I'm the one with this. Problem. problem bill. I don't see any resolution. The answer I got first time was it was going to be a committee of volunteers, a work bee that was going to do the landscaping. I thought, 
the next one I got was Livingstone is doing the landscaping. That is good. Perfect. We've hired a professional. The next version I got is the bill was too large from Livingstone. Were you over budget on the build? Did you not account for it? And, and when I heard the bill, I guess twice as high. I would have jumped out. So I don't know why we're dragging our feet and why there is no timeline. Like, and, and I look at this agenda and think, isn't that strange that these are being discussed now that we've got a problem? Isn't it strange that it takes me getting mad at the building committee before something? And I mean, it was within 24 hours each time of me addressing it, getting mad. Yes, the sump lines are, are fixed after I got mad. Yes, the, the downspouts are now directed at the East Ditch. After I phoned on Saturday and said, why is this not being done? It's going to rain Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Like, what, what is the landowner supposed to do other than he's just supposed to get mad? Like, is that the council's answer? Well, okay, council, uh, you just the you're there. Okay, so Sorry. council can only do so much. The head of council and the building committee chairman are the same person. Yes. Yes. Is, so that, is that not a conflict here? Certainly, but what happens? There's municipal requirements and there's property property requirements, and that is there is there's a line to be sought out there, and that's all we're saying here is that I'm just I'm sitting here and you're giving your presentation, and, and we're going to talk about that later as far as public works but on the basis of municipality. I and believe me and you that, that's outside the scope of council. I believe that that it was said that the, the water from the pump, sump pumps, it was definitely said the water from the sump pumps and the downspouts didn't add to this problem. Yet as as the head of council or the committee building committee chair, you told Don that watering his lawn was saturating it. And adding the problem in his shed and the problem on my lot to the north. There, there's water sitting. And again, that's building to that's landowner and landowner. And that's, well, that's what were you I'm acting upon as Dave? Were you telling Don that as the head of council? No, or as I, the was building telling him, I was telling him as far as committee uh, on the building committee. So it, which it, is a not for profit. So there's a, there's no profit involved it, in that. That's the problem then, him pumping water onto the side. No, no. Well, you told them that. Well, it could. I mean, if water's going to sit there, you just said yourself, you saturate the hill and it causes problems elsewhere, right? But, but yet you told me that it didn't cause a problem on my lot, the sump pumps and the... No, no, I didn't say that. I never said that. You you said that you, you didn't have a problem. And again, that's outside the scope of council. And I don't want to get into that. That's something for you and I discuss in a different element. But, but there's no point in you and I discussing it because it's a conflict of interest. You're the head of council and head of the building committee. And I'm asking... In a situation like that, who do you go to? Right, and that's what I would expect this. Thank you. There's a, there's a civil, this is a civil matter between property owners all the time. When you have people from one property owner to another property, whether it be fencing, water, all these other elements that come into play. Yeah. That's a that property owner to property owner. As far as municipality goes, that's water drainage. So then when a civil matter isn't met, when it isn't dealt with, let's pretend this is just a civil matter that isn't dealt with. Who do the landowners go to to get answers on how it's going to be dealt with? That's what ha you have rights and obligations, and, and that's uh, what happens with a lot of legal stuff happens because people don't get the right answers. So, so, they, so that is what's supposed to happen. It's supposed to go legal. No, I didn't say that. I'm just saying that there's 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 ways to get to deal with it on a civil matter. And so how? And if landowner to landowner come up with some, some uh, meeting of the minds, or in this situation. This started, if you look at your ind indications here, it had to do with water coming off commercial street. That's a municipal. As far as landowner to landowner, that's civil. And that's uh, that's a civil matter, and you have to deal with them. And, and when that can't happen, what do you do? There, there's government agencies, if you want to look at that. You can go to water services, you can go to water, uh, uh, all of water stewardship, all those things come into play. So the town and the and the council has nothing to do with building permits and well, they have building permits. It doesn't doesn't cross off every element that has to do with building, whether yeah. there be water, uh, people building too high a fence, that comes into it's the council. But if you build a breaker fence it's on the property line, you can have that. The piece that we don't have any control over, to my knowledge, is you know the sump pump lines and the, the eaves troughs, those pointing in whatever direction. That's not a council matter. That's not something that we can 
intervene in, to my knowledge. And you can correct me if I'm wrong. So I think there's two elements here. There's there's the sump pump lines and the eaves troughs, and you know that's all outside of us. The whole drainage, you know, ditches, all of that, that's within our scope. So when there is a problem between two, and and you try and settle it, then the next step is not to come to council. It's there's only so much council can do. We can't we can't force people to do things even. If you take a look at uh, Darren's vehicle and all that kind of thing, we have to go through formalities to do that. Even that is limited as to what a council can do. The council can only tell people so much. <clears throat> and on their property, they can have a dog, they can have a cat, they can they can let their dog. You, you can you understand how this is very confusing for me when fun. when the chair of the building committee is who I have to deal with, right? And council is the same person, like could. Council chair of the committee just tell the chair of the council that this is what we need to do. It's the same person, Dave. Okay, I can I can shift this right now. I will shift it to the deputy head of council and take over this meeting right now, and he can discuss it with you. Okay. You know, That's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I I have a, a a question in terms of the engine engineering aspects of the. Uh, the fourplex when you are knowingly going to have to have your sump pumps going at a constant rate, <laughs> therefore then affecting like where you're putting that water doesn't that have to not affect other rate payers due to the fact that a place that we approved to be built then now is constantly pumping from under the ground into our areas and then affecting the repairs. We have to have water dispersal somehow. Correct. In an appropriate way not to affect a repair. Uh that's so we get to my knowledge we don't have jurisdiction over something like that. But engineering wise, correct, would have to go to a standard set by the municipality. And the problems. Um, problems more so when it comes to sump pumps, etc. Okay. There is definitely a requirement for any building that is being constructed to adhere to the Manitoba building codes, Correct. which includes drainage. Yeah. There is leeway for construction period. Um, no guarantee on what the timeline on that is. Um, and obviously, no guarantee on what rain events, snow events, etc., are going to happen in the interim. But there needs to be appropriate drainage provided by the time that the construction yes. is complete. Mr. Sorry. Chairman, I can, just, I can just offer this. There's the, under the codes, you cannot dump water directly onto your neighbor. Indirectly is another situation. Because you have no idea where the water is coming from that could go into individual properties. So, so and, yeah, and that is definitely where it then becomes a civil matter, which anytime somebody comes to me, my suggestion is speak to your solicitor because neighbor to neighbor, there's nothing municipality wise that we can do. I do think some of this is going to help, it's not going to help unless the drainage lines and whatnot find a way to also get into what the municipality is required to do. I Just one more point. So indirectly putting water on to a neighbor, then the neighbor that is getting the water, if he indirectly then funnels the water onto the municipal property, then is it a municipal matter? We want to be ensuring that any water that is coming onto municipal property is drained appropriately. Um, I don't think anybody would ever suggest that individual property owners should make drainage into any of the municipal rights of way, because again, there's a lot that we have to do when it comes to municipal rights of way and drainage that we have to comply with. Um, it's not to say that we certainly wouldn't work with any individual when we see a finished product to know kind of where we need to go with it or what the best solution would be. 
um, to see if there's a way of making it incorporate into what public works manager is already taking a look at that has been identified as an issue. I have no doubt that what we're doing here is going to help going forward. What do I do with the $14,000 bill I'm going to have now? Exactly. And to say that the sump lines and the downspouts, we, I, to use your to indirectly, like when the sump lines are ran to the north and the slope is to the north and there's no diverting it, I can tell you where it's going, to the north. When the downspouts remain up against the wall, in an upright position, what is the first thing everybody does when it's, oh, it's going to rain? We better put the downspouts down. When it falls directly down and the slope is to the north, which way is it going to run? To the north. The problem is when there's piles of dirt left there, it can only go like this and like this between the dirt. It's negligence is what happened with this. The word is negligence. Was the dirt um, going to be cleaned up and you stopped it? Or did that happen? Or The dirt on my property? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you wanted to just leave it there until you had your insurance saying that? Yeah. Okay. But that's not the piles I'm talking about. No, I saw the piles. Yeah, yeah. no, I got you. Derek, I'm going to ask one dumb question, and I'm always bad for this, but if the water coming across commercial was properly diverted, would it help alleviate the whole situation? Would it have helped? Or would it have helped? Oh, yeah, because when it, when it came across commercial, it hit four, I'll call it yeah. four temporary driveways, and had no choice but to run a little bit to the east or a little bit to the west. A little bit to the west and a lot right between. Mm -hmm. That's in between the fourplex and Donald's. So as soon as it ran between the fourplex and Donald's, it pushed baseball size, softball size stones off of that lot, all the way down the edge, and you can go look at the pile of dirt that's there and the stones. I mean, where did anyone think it was going to come? And we're saying it's a torrential rain event. I'm sorry. Two inches is not a torrential rain. Two inches is not a train. Even if it comes in 10 minutes, we've had. There has to be some kind of due diligence to stop this. And those driveways are still above grade. So I, I've talked till I'm blue in the face. I, I'm not losing neighbors over this. I'm asking for help. I'm asking for help. Yeah. There's no drainage done by the, like, can can we as as I have a drive I have a culvert at the end of my driveway. It was not a choice to put that in. I had to put it in because there's a niche there. Every place I drive around town, there's culverts. How come there's a fourplex there with driveways in it above grade that used to run east and now it's who administers that? It's just supposed to be me that says it to the I don't think so. I don't think it's up to me to go to and say, you guys got to run your downspouts to East Ditch five times. You guys can't pump. That's, and when it doesn't happen, what's my next step? To recall? Like I said on June 15th, if this isn't fixed, I'm going to end up with water in my shed. And, and on that specific piece, that's not us. And that's where legal solicitor is your option on that. If you can't come to a conclusion with the property owner, the sump pumps and the each drops. We just don't have any authority on that. There. Okay, so why is it not the scope of what we can handle here? But we can handle the drainage piece, okay. which I think will. Okay. So, so the drainage on those driveways, there is a plan. So yeah, I think we should get into the plan here yeah. because I don't even know how we're going to put motion on the floor to, to discuss. Uh, well, may, may I just ask one yeah. question, Richard Rives? Um, because I live in the rural area, I know when anyone makes a new approach, you have to put in a culvert. Why is that? Why wasn't there culverts put in? But there's no culvert, there's no ditch on that side of the street. I said the same thing. Okay. Um, generally, rurally, yeah. I get an application on my desk. Okay. Are we going to end? end I, I would say let's end the delegation for them and actually get into discussion. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Brett. There we do, right there. Yeah. Was that the extent? Are you good? I, I still would like an answer. Like, I mean, it seems ridiculous to me that the next step is a lawyer. 
like I, I understand how if I build a if I bring a 110 foot garden shed into Walt Mason, I need a permit. It's a 110 foot garden shed. How is that for 110 square feet? <laughs> it's over 100 square feet. Yeah. I don't think that's going to negatively affect my neighbor. Yet you can build a 700 thousand dollar condo or whatever the number is with no plans for drainage. No timeline on, on landscaping. You can look at a quote and go, that's too much, and just not do it. I'll, I'll just bring up this, Eric. And if you look at the new subdivision that happened for a island, that ball runs downhill. Right. There's no there's no drainage in that. Okay. Absolutely nothing. I, I can speak to that. Across the street from you, there's there's a there's a lot that it has a four-foot retaining wall yeah. built by someone. Because you can't just pump water on your neighbor. No, I understand. But I'm saying on my side, in which you also did landscaping. There's no drainage there? There's no drainage. In the front, there is. In the back, and that's where Kyle McDougall gets all his water from the church parking lot, from the neighbors, all goes to his place, and then into Old Lockhart's old place, which has a sump pump that drains into the ditch. Okay. Because and all the and water. you know where that water comes from after that, day. Where it goes, where it goes. You exactly. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. That that's there's no drainage made for that subdivision that you can say, you know, so it's neighbor to neighbor. So that's a fault of the town there too. Well, when the subdivision was made, maybe there should have been some drainage as a whole subdivision because I wasn't here when that took place. But now it's near the neighbor. And and I know that there's been issues. Um, but it that's Again, outside once they're sold and there's now there's individual owners becomes property owners property owner. I like it to be said, Derek, that <laughs> I feel your pain. I feel like you've got a fourteen thousand dollar repair bill. You're going to be faced with uh legal matters that don't come cheap. And it's not your fault. It, it, why? It's not like why? why yeah, why? Like I, I'm I'm gonna be asking that question as well. And this could be alleviated with a few strong backs and a shovel, but it, I think in a lot of ways to stop the overland flooding that's coming across commercial and affecting Donald and everything else. Like we do have the right to make pitches for drainage. And the streets are so wide that there has got to be property there to put ditches in. So, and I think you look at those you know, Councillor Fishers, if you look at the city of Brandon, every time there's a heavy rain, and that oh. be that heavy rain, it, it's visibility because they haven't got a natural flow that goes proper ways. But the problem was, it didn't used to be. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying, and, and that's again where you're left with their you, you know, is, is it up to the municipality to make sure every property owner is looked after? That's not our no. job as a no. municipality. My comment to that is. Make an attempt. Yeah. Just make an attempt. Okay. So in Let, 20 minutes, I can fix half that problem. Let me just go through this first. We'll get this set up. Oh, I'm sorry, Dave, Dave, I just, I, I just wanted uh, to help uh, kind of equate to the amount of water that was flowing um, when Derek got flooded out down below. I had a 75 foot coiled uh, lawn hose. Um, it was laying behind my shed and the fourplex. It washed that hose down and put it on the wall of his building. Now, 75 feet of garden hose just doesn't flow. You know, that, that was the flow. It carried it down and all coiled, like it didn't string it out. It ended up down there coiled. And so yeah, that's the, you know, what we're dealing with here. We're not talking about a, a little trickle or anything else. It, it was massive. Do you have a culvert in your driveway? No. 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 Okay. Anyway, um, being resolved that the presentation from Derek Shearer related to flooding issues and water pumping onto his property at 203 Park be received. We can remove that. The Jones, second Councilor Hatch. All in favor? If you want to move to that? Um, if we could do the decision on the public hearing, that would allow okay. Mr. Peters to leave. That's the first item under general business. <laughs> right. Okay, so judicial use application C2 slash 2023 to allow storage recreational vehicles on 
AL Agriculture Limited Zone of Lot 1, Plan 2528 BLPO, located on part of the northeast border 23717 WPM Peters, be resolved in the conditional use application number C2 2023 to allow storage record of AL Agriculture Limited Zone of Lot 1, Plan 2528 BLTO, located on part of northeast border 23717 WPM Peters, be approved secretary receipt of all required provincial permits. We move that. Councilor Jones, seconder. Councilor Fisher. All in favor? Sure. Just a quick question, and I, I'm 99% sure I know the answer to this, but I just want to make sure. This is the former Frank Weathers property? Is that correct? Okay. Thank you. Okay. I had to do a lot of scratching. I've lived here all my life. <laughs> Where the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> Can I just add one thing? Um, typically, Council, when we have a recommendation, it is usually without any conditions attached to it. In this instance, uh, the applicants and I have recognized that there will be a requirement to get a permit from the highways department because it comes off the highways. The applicant has spoken to highways. They do not believe it is going to be any kind of an issue, but there is a permit required. That is why there is the condition on this approval. All in favor? Okay. Um, if you want to skip to the rest, I can. If that's what council would like to do, that is certainly doable. Okay. All right. So this is some of. What side of the road? Yeah. Well, if you look at this is the road to run straight, the exit is straight down the street. Well, the church is over here. Well, I understand that, I, but it would really make a lot easier if I had on the shed and the oil black and this thing on the drain is a drain that runs. See commercial street there? I got commercial street. So if you take a look at the uh, commercial street from the corner, left hand side, there are points. Mill Street's one goes to Highway Charter. Mm -hmm. like the village, yeah, and, I understand. And the Duke that to two places to the corner. So this improved ditch is on the so the west side or east side of the road? The east, uh, west side. West side. And but there, where the red arrow is, is the east side. Right. Okay. And there's a, there is a over like right the on the third place. Not big. Bring your plan forward. Okay. Not big enough. It's only a squawk in the culture. So. Maybe you could have been like this. That, let's start on Commercial Street, that culvert that's in the air. Yeah, it's way too high. Um, I would like to put it back where it needs to be to flow the water more to the east instead of just spilling out right at the end of the culvert, which may be going over the road right there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so if we, if we start there and we're east way, can we do that? Yeah, well, there's one that goes through Commercial there. Um, well, there's a, a few problems here. So the one that goes under commercial, I believe, was a 24 inch, or no, the one that's above ground right. is a 24 inch. Okay. The one that goes through uh, commercial is an 18 inch. And then when you get down to sheer shop, it's a 16 inch, which under provincial regulations, you are supposed to have the same size upstream. Right. So I'm proposing that that should be replaced um i think it will alleviate some of it backing up excuse me chelsea which one are you talking about the one right by Perry's old shop or the shop no there? i'm talking about the one right in front of shears it's right down not up to, yeah it's not a size it okay. needs to be it is collapsed i believe it's not uh yeah it looks definitely damaged there's so much debris from the runoff like he's mentioning <laughs> i mean it's barely able to even pull through there properly um but also that gives another problem of it going straight to the highways yard so we i talked to drew together we had a plan 
there was an idea of possibly doing a berm, um, but that would be on the edge of that corner to divert it, not to go straight to highways. Or there was another option we could put a culvert through the road more at commercial and mill and 50 50 the water because i mean by by the town shop it's so much higher there yeah it's not going to hurt anything there and below that you have a lot of trees grass yeah you'd have to dig that down a bit in order to make sure it flows that way because i think we looked at that last year it's a little high and it's because there's so much going there across the road because of the height yeah i mean right because of the picture yeah I think that both sides of the ditch need to be refunded on the whole street. Could we put where you have that red culvert on the picture? Could we, is there enough height to put a culvert kind of on an angle like you have it through through uh, Mill, Mill, Mill Street to take some of that water, say where it comes off, where they're going to have the weeping tiles and the uh, and, uh, yeah. downspouts and have a pipe there that will take that to the to that ditch on it needs a clean out i know the ditch on the east side yeah well, but get, get that down there so it runs around the, the yeah. dike and and then you wouldn't get as much water going down mill street towards the corner to the highway because yeah. i know that's an issue uh that's exactly what I'm so we can get about. a lot of that water across there i might mean i don't know what you think Derek, but it might alleviate some of that what is the plan for the driveways on the condos well you know well, Put my different hat on there is it, the Danes who put Livingstone landscape gaping ran gauges on the whole front area. He said there's not a culvert that came from the landscape. He said the lowest part of that point is at the far east driveway and it all runs down from there from the top to the bottom. Now, I think there may be some grooming to be done, but as far as what Dane was saying, no culverts required. The, the fourplex is almost 150 foot down. I, I don't know how they, when that water in, in this plan, Chelsea, is, is fine to help what's existing, but it doesn't address the issue of that water coming across the street. And uh, that's that's the biggest concern in all of this is um, you know water can't make that right hand turn when there's a volume of water that culvert cannot handle it so it crosses straight across the street so the fourplex being higher that's just a fact you know that that water has to go somewhere and it isn't you know it isn't going to be a gentle flow when that occurs so you're talking, you're talking surface water off the road? No. Are you talking I'm water talking coming across? overflow water from coming across. So that water, like that culvert doesn't even come close to handling the volume coming down that ditch. You get more water will cross the road than flows in that ditch. So lowering the end of that culvert, yes, that's, that's good. Mm -hmm. But that water, it's uphill to the east in that ditch. And, you know, I think the ditch has got to be lowered. And I, oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah like I know, Craig, you looked at that yeah. a year ago. And we, yeah, we were, we did clean some ends out there too. Yeah, no, no, then that all help, Bob. But again, the, the ditch cannot handle the volume of water coming. You, you're talking the ditch on the south side, south side of, of commercial. And that's in front of Porky's and Fiddler's well, and to the corner that, of Mill Street and commercial. Yeah. yeah. You know, just past Dennis's where it's coming down from the church, or you know, right. the hall church and the hall water. Right. Yeah. And, the, and the big issue there is that's where all the utilities are located. Well, yeah, like I know uh, Hydro brought service into the fourplex uh, there. Uh, Westman Cable has has gone there. Um, now, the other thing I just want to add, and Perry Klein told me, they used to have an overflow cut at the, the corner just prior to the ditch. So that when there was a high volume of water, the overflow would take it to the east, you know, get it a little bit further down. And I guess when Fiddler built the place and they had excess dirt, they just, they filled that. I, I don't know where the property, like, 
there is a uh, the town has property there, obviously for the ditch. I don't know how far it goes to the east, and I don't know. I remember the cut, but I don't know if, how, if it went on to that property or not. But yeah, that overflow did take a lot of that excess water, which now crosses the road. And I don't think the condos need a ditch for the water that originates on the condo lot. I fully believe where it stones, it will run east. It's the stuff that originates south of the condo lot. Right. So when it comes across the road, we all need a plan in place that when it does come across the road, it has the ability to go east. So you just get all where the white pipe is, the baggage free pipe is from there. That's it's, it. It's coming from the No, no, it's not all coming because it runs down, like Don said, it runs down what should be a back lane past the road diddlers off the church behind. So it runs down there too. And when it comes there, it takes a slight bend to the west, hits those driveways, and then last time it hit the driveways, ran between the condos. Mm -hmm. If I was a condo owner right now, it's going to come down that back lane. If, it, if the stuff that originates on the lot, Livingstone is right, it will make its way east. The stuff that crosses the street, and that stuff isn't, can't be contained in a ditch because it's coming across what's supposed to be a back lane. There is no ditch then. It's going to hit that the same as it did before. And some of it will, if it's a large volume of water, some of it will run west. It will run slightly uphill to the west if it's a big enough volume of water. Uh, Derek, can I just add to that? I, I've looked at this once, and, and one thought I had is the water, at one time they tell me used to run down the side of Four Street on the east side. Well, it can't do that now without a whole bunch of work because it's the ditch has gone completely. You'd have to start and basically rate up at the whipper wheel or rate and, and kind of divert it. So, and, and I just don't think that that would be a very good option. I'm wondering if uh, possibly two, two inch, like four inches of asphalt run from basically Mill Street, just past where that culvert is, kind of not as far as where the entrance to the shop is, but build that up with four, two lifts of asphalt, two two inch lifts, four inches, and that down past, maybe even past Perry's, somewhere there, to try to get that water when it comes up, it won't run across the road. And you know, you got four more inches of, of grace there. I don't know what you guys think, but that, I've thought of that. And do two lifts and it will keep that water in the ditch from spinning over as much. Sure, you'll get some running off the road that'll go, but it shouldn't flow from that drain. That's just the thought I had. I think the problem, Bob, is that it, it is literally shooting over that, you know, where it hits Commercial Street. So you could have a six inch burn, let's say, but it's it's just coming with that volume. And, and this, this was why I, I go back to to where the other uh, Whipper Will property, the first one, where that uh, ditch is turned, it goes behind them to the east, and then you know, um, again, yeah, that a lot of that. Well, originally, I think most of that water went straight north down. Um, can they not split it there, like put a culvert in? Um, you know, to take at least some of that water straight north, rather than all having to go to the east, to the north. Yeah, but, um, you know, and, and I, I know you don't want to open up a floodgate and just let it all go rushing down there because it'll create another problem, but I, I'm suggesting possibly splitting it so that at least part of it, let's say if it could be set up that, uh, when a bigger water comes, it'll carry some of that excess rather than into the because yeah, when it's when it's coming across, like Herman Heinrichs told me that he stood there and looked out his front window. And he says, "Don, like I, I couldn't believe my eyes. It was a river shooting across." Yeah, so it sounds to me like we got an issue. Number one with the south ditch. Number two with culverts, a twenty-four inch culvert going into an eighteen inch culvert going into a sixteen inch culvert. That is the wrong. Well, well you're not allowed to do that. Not anymore. <laughs> yeah. Not yeah. anymore. That's there's reasons for that. Yeah. So I think that's where we have to improve our ditches, and and that even if there's a uh, utility down there, we can still groom that ditch. It doesn't uh, have to be dumped down to China. 
And I think that if we're digging the ditch, probably some erosion control would help to, to um, let the grass grow in the ditch to help the runoff that are plugging Derek's uh, culvert. Well, the only reason that it gets plugged is the dirt from the dog. Well, that's what I mean. If we can, I mean, then it should be landscaped sooner than later, right? I mean, I know it's a new build, right? Yeah. So, yeah, that plus, uh, you know, when I talked to Livingston, they were they were booking into August, late August. Okay. So okay. Uh, even if we got them, it wouldn't be till late August. So I'm looking at other alternatives as far as the building committee goes. Anyway, Mr. Okay. Chairman, I, the the challenge that I'm having is I am not an expert in water, and to my knowledge, I don't think anybody in here is. I, I would I think you guys have next to <laughs> do some work in the municipality. I would ask them first, and then. They would say, no, we're agricultural. We have no experience in residential. Why don't you try Burns Mandel is the name I know. Like we can sit on this table and go, okay, well, this, this, and this. Yeah. But it's it's not just the water that takes that 90 degree turn. It's also the water that comes off the, the church and the hall and the back that comes across down what's supposed to be a back lane. There is no ditch there. Here it's on the road and what do you? What's your thoughts if we build a bunch of uh, rock steps down the ditch behind the hall, where towards where the ninety degree pipe is, like to slow the flow of water? I don't know. Well, you're going to have a backup gain into the other side where um, the other fourplex is. It's not necessarily going to back it up. So it's going down. It's going to back up. It already floods that one. Yeah. Like that's so, on the. I, uh, I, I agree that I think we can reach around this for the next three hours, not get anywhere. But um, I think this is the starting point, and maybe we do get a hold of the county council can come up with a resolution that uh, we contact them. I hesitate to get just say let's get this group. I think we have to take a, a little more in depth view as to what municipal requirements are. I know that this is not a problem just in Long Beach. So this is a problem in Brandon. This is a problem in Melinda. This is a problem. Every municipality has these issues. It is not due. So Can I make a suggestion? On any new builds going forward, we, there needs to be a timeline. Like, we can't say as the building committee, we tried this and then we came to August. We knew in March that we reached the date of this condo. We had to have money set aside then. If the bill is Twenty thousand dollars or thirty thousand dollars. You can't. You can't just keep exploring other like yeah. any any landscaper that is any good at all should be booking into August. If they're not, I would ask why. Like if we left till the last minute, home Livingstone, which we did, because we had no plan in place as the building committee, and I'm including we. There was no plan in place. Livingstone was a last minute, two week ago thing. Of course, they're booking into August. If they're any good at all, they should be booking into August. Well, okay. ha as a council, you have to have some plan in place. That, okay, you're building a new build. What is the time? Can I, can I make a suggestion? So, with um, the bigger cities, and I obviously know I'm not, I mean, I'm not on that scale, but there's a storm water plan for new builds, right? So, it's either going to go to the front of your property or to the back of your property. And you have a plan on where that water is going to go. So, I mean, that could be something that potentially could come down the pipes later. Um, as for the, the landscaping, I mean, I'm, I have a residential landscaping, so I, I understand exactly where you're coming from. But I think that with the plan in place for the ditching, and the water's already going to flow least, just like Dane said, and I think that it will alleviate a lot of the problem. Um, it, and if this meeting was in June of July of 2022, <laughs> July of 2023. Yeah. Again, yeah. There's, there's no bylaws in, in place for that, so you can't be saying we're going to do this, we're going to no, do that. No, and I'm just saying it's, that. It's something that council will have to take that into consideration. Yeah. I mean, making sure they're legal bylaws. You just can't say, hey, we're going to do the bylaw. We have to make sure they're legal and that they're, they're, they can be applied. I was going to say there are some things um, that I don't believe we have jurisdiction over, such as trying to implement a timeline because you don't know, uh, especially with the new build. Uh, renovation might be a little bit different, but the new build, uh, I know from the construction of this building, it didn't run anywhere close to on time. I'm not sure municipally that we've got jurisdiction over trying to 
really put that in place. Um, but I do know that by final completion, there are things that need to be done. Um, whether or not I would we think were, there could be a timeline from a date of moving. Like if you're allowed to move into houses because they're complete, there should be a timeline from that point forward that is nine months. But like the only it, thing that happens so and then problems arise and it's, it's always behind usually, right? So you get a certain timeline and no one's ever going to be able to meet one, you know, like when things go wrong. So if, it, if it's a set in three months or whatever, like everything usually is always set, by, especially with COVID too, right? Like it's harder to get. I, I would just like a plan. Yeah. Okay. Well, it, it just it just so you're aware that there's only so much a council can do as well, a municipality. So okay. I, I think the other problem is it's a huge conflict of interest when the head of council and the head of the building committee are the same person. I, I don't see that. Uh, well, Joni was going to get back to me with all the answers, and today is the first time I've heard from Joni. Uh, Mr. Sherman, can I just I just like to make a suggestion that we keep. Uh, you know what we're going to find out here in the next bit if we're that we're going to look at somebody that, to look into this drainage can we keep uh, uh don and derek in the loop there or like whether it you know uh, oh, so somebody can do that uh, we'll do our best uh, i mean we there are certain things we can disclose yeah. or some things we can't disclose all the time so i don't want to be saying that we're going to do everything and then we're going we don't get back in the game and they say well we didn't do this well there's certain criteria that we have to follow um, one has to be careful. It's, this is not just card launch. What do you mean, Chelsea? Keep you get home or somebody just so they know. I know you guys want to move on, and, and I just uh, want, want to throw out an idea, Chelsea. So, where that right handed uh, culvert is, you say it's a 24 inch. Can we not go to a larger culvert there? Nope. Well, Without application. Yeah, everything has to go through the culvert. Okay, um, but. But depending uh, on what's upstream from that. You know what? Why don't um, we get together and we'll walk it together and then we can talk Sounds great. about, you know. But to me, if, you know, if more water could go through there and turn and get heading east, that would be less to go over. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and the one under Commercial Street has to equal the one. Like, is that not too small to it? It, it can't be a lesser size going downstream. So it is a lesser size. That's well, we exactly my plan that we already went over. <laughs> but if, if the water, yeah. let's say, let's say we put a three foot in there, and the water's going east, branching off, going north down. Or is that mill? Mill, mill. I'm sorry. Uh, does it? Does, it shouldn't have to be the same there, does it? Because we're splitting the flow then. Anyway, I, I'll leave that to you. Yeah. I'll, I, and I appreciate, listen, I want to say, I think we've had a tremendous discussion here this morning. You guys are very aware of what's going on. Uh, and I appreciate the time we've spent here because I know your delegations don't last. I thought it was actually 10 minutes for you. So, well, yeah. I've let it go a little longer than we usually do, but it's only because of the, the, the delegation that it's had some other concerns from past. So, um, I want to make sure that you're aware of this now. Culverts are culverts. We have to apply anytime we increase the size of a culvert. We have to apply to the province. We have to get permits. We have to get approval. So that cannot be done and will not be done in a short period of time. And I'd be surprised with what's going on with the government right now, with the upcoming election. There's all kinds of issues. So we'll do our best. But Let's not tie ourselves into this, say we're going to do it next week, because that's not oh, that's, probable. That's not feasible. But I appreciate the fact that now I know. Like, I didn't know anything about this until today. Nothing. And at least I'm going to go down there and I'm going to walk it. And then I'm going to try to explore it. And Chelsea and I have been friends through a lot. And she's going to guide me through her thought process. And I might have a little nudge somewhere to try to figure this out. This, yeah, yeah and, and anytime any council members, like I gladly meet with them and, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm like the oldest person here and I, I, so I've seen a lot of these things, you know, I got some history there and, and I can explain some things and some changes. So anybody wants to meet with us, we're available. Okay. Sure. Good, thank you. No, thank you. So uh, let's carry on with our council business here. <laughs>
do some sort of a resolution on this. And what does council want? Review it again in camera. I think we need to do that. I mean, what's if somebody has a resolution they wish to bring forward that's. Um, but, sorry, I, I have another question for Chelsea. Is there something? Because I, I believe we should be getting an engineer for this. Like, I, I, and maybe you can tell me that I'm wrong and, you know, this is your expertise. Um, but I'm, I'm uncomfortable with us spending a whole bunch of money and then find out later that it's still not yeah. working, right? Yeah. So, I would rather spend a bit more money on an engineer right now because this is not a simple issue. There's water coming from multiple directions. We've got changes to the, to the landscape. Um, so my question, I think, is, you know, do you think an engineer is, would be helpful? I mean, not just for the scope of this project, but for the scope of the whole town, really. I mean, there should be a plan in place because we have new builds coming in. We want to encourage these new builds. You know, there's these this for the people that they can live. That's the whole goal. Yeah. We want people to live here. So recognizing that an engineer yeah. is going to further slow this down, is there steps that you see that you know would be cost effective and quick that could be helpful, serve as a meantime solution? I like I mean you and I walked the whole thing. It's very knowledgeable when it comes to the water system. That's a very good idea. Um, as for an engineer, it's going to be expensive. I mean, everything is going to cost money in this state. And mm -hmm. will it happen in the next week? Absolutely not. Um, you know, we don't have money set aside just to you, do these big projects, right? You want to have a resolution to have administration deal with something <laughs> short term? And then long term engineer. Yeah, like something that, you know, that's your question of these guys again. Is there something you see that could be quick and, and cheap that would have an impact for the short term here while we try to figure out a permanent solution? Well, I, I fully understand, you know, what's involved in timelines with government. And um, I, I think the Possibly the quickest and easiest was what we did a year ago. We're at, uh, cleaning the culverts and, uh, you know, opening up a culvert that was plugged and, you know, that all helps. But yeah, we need a, a little, a better plan and a bigger resolution to this. And, and I agree with Chelsea that, you know, uh, part of, part of the problem is that this council did not create this issue. This, happened 20 and 30 years ago, you know, where they were looking for, let's say, re chief <laughs> uh, resolutions to problems. And these problems have, you know, gotten bigger. And yeah, sure. that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. I'd yeah. rather spend a bit more money right now to get an engineer and fix this for good properly than try to band-aid a solution. Mm -hmm. But I also don't want there to be a torrential rain next week and you know that's, that's out of our control and no I, I know but if there is something like cleaning out a culvert that we can do quickly and easily that would be helpful then let's do that in the I think cleaning out the ditch behind the current ferry shop deepening that ditch a little bit and at least keep the water that's coming through that culvert in that ditch it right it, yeah. right now it's coming onto the road and working its way into the ditch on the west side of the road. Yeah, and is that something we have the capability to do, Chelsea? Pardon? Is that something we have the capability to do ourselves? Well, I mean, we have to find somebody to do that work because we don't have the equipment right now. Right. So it's, it's definitely possible. I don't, it's, I don't think it's a lot of work there. No, no, I think it is. I think it's no, but I mean, in, in, in for public works, why are we doing one side of the ditch when we're not doing the other side of the ditch? Like, if the equipment's there, we don't want to waste money doing just the one, like, you know, You're try talking. to plan the jobs together so we're saving well, them. that's what we're saying. Come back, bring it back very quickly to the council so we can take a look at it so we don't get into this. If you have some simple, I think that's the council. I think the right council voter on the east side would be enough just to take out. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think so. Just use the town loader and just get them to just, so the water will run to get, it's not a permanent fix, but it'll get that water. And the water is going to continue to come across the road. 
So those driveways that Livingstone says will run underwater, they will, but they won't won't run the water that's coming across the road. I think those driveways need a swale or whatever word you want to put on it so that it'll allow it to go to east for the water that comes over the road. And that, that would be a grooving thing, and that's something to gain for the the uh, landowners to come. But in any case, that, that's, you want to do a resolution for that? No, I've got there? something here. I don't know if And I wouldn't spend a whole bunch of money putting water into the highway tonight because with what's going on in agriculture right now, if somebody catches wind of that, you'd spend a lot of money to put water into the highway yard. Well, I think highways is responsible for some of that too. They they should have some sort of uh, solution to that because it's right in, in line with everything. So it's hard to divert completely. Is there not a ditch there, beside there, the highways? There is a ditch at the element entering. And right. The water is supposed to go that way, so it's not through their yard. But in the cases where everyone gets flooded out and everything gets backlogged. I can see that being a fair easy fix. Chelsea, yeah. can, can you lower the end of that 93 pole? I think that that is probably one of the first places we need to start. Perfect. Yeah. Hey, let, let's, let's do some of that and, and we'll try to get through the resolution here. Yeah. And I would put forward if somebody wants to remove it. Could I? I just want to ask a question. Is there a possibility if um, financially it is uh, quite large that the building committee then also help with the cost due to the fact that where the house was built, you now have four pumps pumping out of the spring? Well, and I guess if, if it's, uh, and I'll just put on the different hat of being village committee, that basically has stopped pumping. There's no water, hardly any water going down that ditch right now. Is that not right? As yeah, here the last week. Yeah. Yeah. And then when you're, um, then when you replenish that groundwater, then the same thing is going to happen. Right. right. And now everything is running to the ditch. Okay. There's In no the winter, water. though, it won't. Pardon? In the winter, it won't. No. No. It won't. Keep in mind that we're not dealing with that. Right? Yeah, like and that's, that's not that's outside of the scope of what else. Oh, I no, I, I realize that, and I'm just talking about like <clears throat> due to the fact that now we have to alter our drainage due to uh, property being built. You no know, way to do that. Yeah, right. Mr. Fashion has had to do that for years of that water coming across. Is that not correct? Yeah. That. And and it's gotten worse. Like, you know, if it if it was once every five years, you just kind of accept it. But when yeah. it's regularly, at least twice a year, and you know, two to four of, times a year, yeah, so, then then it becomes burdensome. So yeah, let's we'll, we'll, we can only deal with council as far as council as far as the buildings are concerned. The lot owners that's between them. So that's the motion that I was able to put it yeah, and I don't know if we want to split it out. I'm thinking that from the conversation, you're not passing one without passing the other, but if you want to split it out. Covered. Be it resolved that administration be directed to deepen ditches and clean culverts within existing budgets and further that a quote be obtained for engineer services for a drainage plan. The Council very much to do that. The seconders. Council go. Discussion. All in favor? Okay. Um, so we have to go back onto our agenda. To your okay, to the drainage. Again. Um, hey, can we see part? You sure we can. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I don't want to see that again. We're pretty entertaining. <laughs> Thanks again, everyone. We appreciate the time and input. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, this is an application for tile drainage, whereas information has been received for next gen drainage solutions on behalf of Peter Volpe with respect to a proposed tile drainage project located on North 8817 WPM, whereas requests have been made for a cut through road 44 North, whereas concerns expressed by public works manager relate to areas of provincial jurisdiction permanently. Therefore, be it resolved that the request for tile drainage permission and consent from next gen 
Drainage Solutions on behalf of Peter Bolton to supply and install first trial drainage on North 8817 WPM be approved subject to the return to its original state following installations, including City of Rana specifications for road work, with all work to be completed in consultation with the public works manager. Please do that. Councilor Hatch, seconder. Councilor McGregor, discussion. All in favor? Okay, we have resolved this proposed fiber plan, fiber path to the north side of Road 44 North, east of PR 348, in the southeast, southwest corner, southwest corner 18819W, as outlined on the map attached to correspondence dated June 19, 2023. From RF now be approved subject to the fiber offset being one meter from the property line and all road crossings being directly drilled and work area restored to its former state. Okay, please move that. Councilor McDonald, seconder. Councilor Fisher, discussion. I, I have discussion. Um, and I know Chelsea and I kind of talked about this, but what is considered to be uh, restored to restore the area to the former state? Because what we looked at, it was absolutely horrible on the dump road. So we should be contacted then to come back. You see yeah, that? I talked, I talked to the crews. Um, they were going to let the other crew know. The only issue that comes up though is it's under a hydro line. So is that hydros right away there? Hydro right the... will have an easement to run power, but yeah. it, it's still our property. It's still okay. So, out of respect to the property owner, it was a pretty big mess that they left there. Okay, so we should be contacting them with formal notice. I believe when you are at the owner. I talked to her. We are the property owner, are we not? It's on municipal property. Yeah, it's ours. Yeah. But so, yeah, it's on the way in. Like she maintained it, well, yeah, and dog. unfortunately, it is ours, not hers. But I can see the concern there for sure. Well, if it's our. We have the resolution. The resolution states it has to be restored. So if it's not, they have to give formal notice to them through administration. Yeah, typically RF now have been really good. They've got two separate crews: one doing the installation and one doing the restoration. Um, anytime that we have contacted them with an area, whether it was on behalf of the owners or the owners themselves contacted them, or when it's on our property that we've contacted them, they have ensured that a, that a crew come out and redo. I don't even know how you're going to redo this. Okay. Is they really like cutting trees and, and just like. Well, or... we just pointed right over them. Yeah. Uh, Joni did. We have to make, we have to deal with that. You got to take photos. You got to take. When I got down to the Lake Comedy Road, did they, they never did clean up the trees because Henry Carroll was that. <coughs> okay, then again, those are things that you need to make me aware of so that I can follow up with RF now. If we don't know, we can't. Well, no, back Darcy knew. Okay, but you didn't bring it forward to the deal. Formal notice has to go to these people. Yeah, I, I document any of this that we're doing this because we've got contract with them that ensured that they would do the restoration work. So. Anything else? All in favor? We had resolved that a $25 sponsorship donation be made to Sip Whiskey Museum in support of its free Tuesday admission campaign. We wish to move that. Second, Councillor McGregor. Discussion. All in favor? Be resolved in accordance with approach policy Trans 008, the application of Delman Dougal with Dougal Farms Burbank Limited to construct an approach on Road 39 North located on part of the southwest corner 21719 WPM being approved. Moved by Councillor McGregor. Seconder. Councillor Jones, discussion? Councillor Mr. Chairman, it's a, more of a question. Um, so there is an existing approach in this field. They're indicating in the correspondence that it, it's very steep, has a large rock in it. Do we have an obligation to put, to have one approach into a field? Or, and people 
pay for the second one or do they pay for mm -hmm. the first one as well? Um, they will pay for any culverts or work to build the approach. The policy specifically states that for field access, you're allowed to have two uh, within an 800 meter stretch. So that would be his quarter section. So he is allowed to have the two, but it is his expense uh, in order to do it. Chelsea has been out and met with him with respect to whether or not he's going to require a culvert, whether the ditch is such. Yeah, yeah we've already spoke about it. I told them what it would require, and it's just pending approval from council. Yeah, so I think my question is not whether a second is allowed. That's, I understand that part. Do we have an obligation to provide the first? And if the first is deficient, not, not good, then do we have any obligation to improve it? Rectify it. Um, I believe, and this goes back a little bit, that the approach policy has been amended in the last, I'm going to say, four years. I believe there was a time where council um, provided the approach and provided the culvert and provided the road construction. The new policy did away with that in that um, why should everybody in the municipality be supplementing somebody for getting an approach? So I would say under the old permit, we would have, or under the old policy, we would have probably been required to do the repair. His indication is it's too steep. Uh, he's the one suggesting a better location for the second one. So I don't believe that we have an obligation. We could work with him if we wanted to um, discontinue use of the first one. But under the policy as it exists now, I believe that the new construction is, is him. I think the biggest problem is you can't get six turn on these narrow little 12 foot wide approaches and things going into fields and coming off of fields. Like the size of air seeders that Google's got, but air seeders that have tank guys behind and everything else. Like they just can't safely get in there or out of there. But it's a, it's a low spot yeah. where that footbridge is. So it fills with water. And then, like you said, equipment is getting bigger and better. And if they can't withhold a the weight. Over and over and over again, and when there's moisture sitting there, yeah. I mean, it's not working for them anymore. So, where they're proposing it is not that far away, but it's uphill a little bit so that it won't be wet. And when you come harvest, you get a rain. How are you getting in and out of there with whatever you're bringing in, whether it's a cedar or a super V or you know, that may be impossible. And where the new one's going, it's conveniently located across from another one, like on the other side of the road, which will make it easier for mowing when you have two approaches there together. You can do them both at the same time. So whether it was the first or second approach, they paid for it. Yes, yeah. yeah, with, okay. with the new policy. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All in favor? Whereas pursuant to section 372 of the Municipal Act, the municipality may set a reserve bid in the amount of the tax arrears and costs in respect to the property. Now, therefore, be it resolved that a reserve bid be placed in all properties in the amount of all arrears and costs in respect to each property listed for tax sale. Do that. Councilor Hatch, seconder. Councilor McDonald, discussion. All in favor? Okay. Okay, we have workplace safety. Okay. <clears throat> you want to go through that first one? Do you have anything you want to add to it? Um, no, I simply did we receive it. Um, taking a look at the waste transfer sites, uh, some of the issues that they came up with are things that are already in place, such as uh, that we have to comply or provide evidence that 
we ensure the fire extinguishers are maintained. Uh, that's done in all of our facilities. It's supposed to be annually. Uh, they haven't been out in a while, but they were here actually probably a month ago and realized he didn't have the necessary paperwork, so they will be back. Um, updating the first aid kit. Chelsea has already um, had the guys go out and purchase what they need. The tripping hazard, uh, you're aware that the ramp was damaged. This happens almost annually within our maintenance budget of getting it repaired. There is the curb stop, I believe, is what the safety officer noted and said that that was, was good to have, recognizing that you're still going to get damaged when people are backing up and <coughs> fencing. Uh, the working alone or in isolation, we've already got a work alone policy. And safety procedures, this is one that we don't have in writing, is a procedure for burning waste. It isn't typically the waste transfer station attendants to do it. It is our public work staff, and we usually have the fire department um, aware that it is happening. It wouldn't hurt to have that in writing. And that was that for the waste transfer stations. Why does it say, though, um, burn pit signs should be removed as there is no longer burn pit in the area? Uh, uh, I didn't that. Okay. So we don't, well, the reason we don't have a burn pit is because it's unsafe and probably, right? Thank you. Um, but it's in her man, um, in the manual that she's not to burn at that location. And this is in the open? Yeah, it's the open. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, generally, we just go and burn ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Okay. When we're set to do so. Yeah. It can be resolved that the improvement order from workplace safety and health for the management shop be received. We can move that. Officer Jones and Council Brigger discuss any further. All in favor? Okay. Anyone? The workplace safety and health for the water treatment plant. A lot of what was indicated is having the Fact sheets available, having the chemical jugs picked up and disposed of. Uh, the one thing that they do note um, is the fact that we do have a confined space and that we should have a risk assessment done for what that looks like if an employee has to go down it. And if we should also have. Yeah, I mean, there are some of those um, things that are kind of within our existing budget that we can put in. The other thing that I thought we needed to take a look at and then it had to do with confined workspace as well. I think it's a, a procedure is what it requires. And typically, I know for a fact that Drew does not go down into confined space without somebody else in attendance with them, but I think we need to document that. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, be resolved that the improvement order for workplace safety and health for the water treatment facility be received. We move that. Mr. Jones, seconder. Mr. Hatch, all in favor. Okay, be resolved that this regular meeting now adjourns to an in camera meeting to discuss a financial matter as per subsection 152.3b3 of the municipal act. All matters discussed in camera are confidential and so discussed at an open meeting as per section 83.1d of the municipal act. Let's conclude that. Councilor Jones, Senator Curtis McDonald, all in favor? Okay. Okay. Let's have a okay. So the meeting resolves that this in-camera meeting does now resume back to regular meeting. Everyone please move that. Mr. Fisher, seconder. Councilor Jones, all in favor? Sorry. She's got that go. She's just ahead of it. She's yeah, but we'll wait till yeah. they come back in before we do. Thank you. Okay, so. Yeah. Okay, so be resolved that a new look at a new tender be issued for the road 
complete capping services with modified specifications for Turkey Ranch, power, and an option for Treaty Bank Road. Please move that. Mr. Rigger, seconder. Mr. Fisher. All in favor? So whereas in August 2019, Councilor authorized an expenditure of up to thousand dollars plus applicable taxes for each staff member or member of council who sought independent legal advice related to harassment, and whereas the amount of harassment and cost of legal advice has both increased, and therefore it being resolved that council authorized the expenditure up to three thousand dollars plus applicable taxes for each staff member or member of council who seek independent legal advice related to harassment. So please move that. Councilor McDonald, Secretary, Councilor Fisher, all in favor? Okay, so be it resolved that the administration be directed to prepare relevant materials for council consideration at this August 18th council meeting related to the issuance of adventures for upgrades to the water treatment plant, pump, and generator. Please move that. Councilor Adams, Seconder, Councilor Fisher, all in favor? So be it resolved that the administration be instructed to make application for funding for a new public workshop through the Low Carbon Economy Fund, whereby building costs will cost $800,000, a reduction in the GHG emissions through the fuel switching from propane and natural gas to grid supplies, electricity, and other efficiencies in windows, doors, and installation be used to support the application. So please move that. Councillor Jones, seconder. Councilor McGregor, all in favor? Chair. Okay. Be resolved that administration be instructed to withhold payment for dust control services due to product quality and or application. Please move that. Councilor Jones, second Councilor Hatch, all in favor? Opposed? Say. Yeah. Okay. So being resolved that this meeting is now adjourned. We began on Friday, August 18, 2023, at 9 a.m. with the minute of the Please move that. Councilor Jones, seconder. Councilor McDonald, all in favor? Very great.